So it's important to note when you guys are calibrating your system and taking measurements with microphones, if you're using REW, it's important to note that there are variances between the microphones that are significant enough that can have you alter your target curve. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics. So you guys know I do a lot of measurements on Audioholics and I do a lot of in-room measurements when I do my calibrations. I show you guys the frequency response curves and I set my target curves uh, to get the systems to sound right. And I think I'll do a separate video on that topic in itself because I could talk for a very long time about that and I wanna keep this video concise about the mic calibrations. So I was doing some measurements a while back and I've got about three or four microphones at my disposal. So when you're going online and you're going to buy a microphone to use with uh, Room EQ or REW, you have two options that are the major ones. You have the Mini DSP U-Mic 1. You also have the U-Mic 2. And then you have Dayton Audio, the UMM6. These are all very good microphones. They're good enough to do the kind of in-room measurements for calibration that you want to do. They generally are not precise enough to do very accurate work if you're doing loudspeaker design. And in those cases, you want better microphones. You want microphones that are professionally calibrated that go just beyond the mic calibration files that come with these devices. So I ran a little experiment. I did some measurements in a room, um, in my theater room. I just took it from one particular seat. It wasn't even the money seat. And um, I took two U-Mic 1s and I took a Dayton Audio UMM6 and I did a frequency response after I put the calibration files each, in each time. And I saw some variances that were pretty stunning and shocking to me, to be honest with you. And I want to share this with you. So this is a measurement at one of my seats, and this is probably before I had everything fully optimized, but the system was consistent. I had it set, I had all the EQ set, and all I did was vary the microphone and put the calibration file and just redo the measurement, made sure the levels were all matched. And you could see um, the red trace is the UMM6, that's the Dayton Audio, and then the green and the blue are two different U-Mic ones. And there's a pretty significant difference in the levels. There are some areas where the graphs, they line up, and then there's other areas where you see a two, three, sometimes four dB variance in level. And that's enough to throw off, you know, your base levels. If you think, if you're setting a certain target, let's say that you're trying to have flat base response below 80 Hertz. You've got multi-sub, you EQ'd it, it's flat. Now you want to shelve it up because you don't want flat response from 20 to 20 kilohertz. You want a rising base response as the frequency goes down and a slightly tapering off as the frequency goes up. And generally speaking, I set my targets anywhere from plus three to plus six or seven dB um, below 100 hertz. That's kind of the level I set because that sounds the most pleasing in my room. And like I said, I could do a separate video just on that topic because it really, the base level depends on your taste. It depends on your floor. It depends on just many things and how the uh, acoustics load in your room. But in this particular case, I want to focus on the microphone and how the calibration is very different. And what's really interesting is if you look below about 40 hertz or so, for years, I've been using the UMM6 when I've been setting up my systems. And you can see the base levels are about 3 dB hotter than the U-Mic 1s. So when I would set my target at plus 5 dB and I would go and listen to the system, it would sound a little thin. It didn't sound as bassy as, you know, what I would expect. And people would come in and are like, you know what, Gene, your bass is really linear. Your bass is really tight. It could go up a couple of dB. I'm like, you guys are crazy. It's five dB above, um, you know, below 100 hertz. It's five. It's plus five dB. That's about where I generally set it. Well, I didn't know that over time. Maybe this microphone just varied enough where it just got out of calibration, and you could see that the levels are significantly higher below 30 hertz than the other two microphones. 
But what really shocked me was when I went to the U bike one and the variance is at below 20 Hertz, just between two U mic ones is about three dB looks really big here because I zoomed in on it. I wanted you guys to really understand and see the differences, but you can see the green versus the blue trace at 10 Hertz. It's about a three dB level difference there. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, you're always gonna get variances between microphones, unless you go and get like a really expensive B and K mic, multi thousand dollar microphone with a really precise uh, high quality capsule, very low noise capsule, and it's professionally calibrated. You're gonna get variances, there's no doubt about that. The other thing too is these microphones, the U mic one, the U mic two, I actually prefer the U mic one over the U mic two, but, um, these microphones below 20 hertz are not particularly accurate because you're getting into a higher noise floor. So when you're trying to measure infrasonic bass, especially below 10 hertz, it's very difficult to get accurate results with this. But it begs the question is, what should you do at this point? Should you trust the measurement and set a level based on science about what people's preferences are for target curves? Or should you flatten and linearize the response, set it to where you think it should be, and then do listening and let your ears decide? And I'm going to tell you it's the latter, to be honest with you. I always make sure I do listening after I do my calibrations. Now, there are options. You can submit one of your microphones into a calibration service and have them professionally calibrated. And it's going to be more accurate than what you get when you buy it directly from mini DSP and just use the calibration file. I know Matthew Pose has gotten some professionally calibrated microphones and he had a device that can calibrate them. Um, and as, as well as um, loudspeaker manufacturers. In fact, that's what I did with this one microphone I had is um, my friends from RBH had a professionally calibrated microphone. I compared theirs to mine and I, altered my calibration file so I could get similar results to theirs. And I know that it's more accurate as a result. But yeah, I just wanted to bring this to you, to bring this attention to you guys, because a lot of people are not aware of this fact. So if you're setting up a system and you're relying on a certain base level, based just on the measurements of these microphones, just understand that there are variances between microphones. And if you're not using the same microphone every time, that could definitely affect how you do in your calibration. So guys, if you want to hear more about this topic and you want me to talk more about um, target curves and stuff, give me some comments down below. Let's get the views up because I know it's a very abstract topic and I love talking about this stuff, but if it doesn't get engagement, then it's, it's difficult to continue to do uh, videos like this if you guys don't want to see it. So I really do appreciate the comments. I want to get this, you know, the thumbs up on this. Please share this video. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.